You got to look at our car and know God gave me that car. And when he gave it to me, I was struggling at first to make the payment. But now I own it. I got the title to it. That's something that God did. You got to have something to take with you. He said, get that rod and be reminded that I'm God. Talking to somebody. Your business ain't there because of your brilliance. Your business is arriving. It's thriving because God told you to open it up. And when he told you to do it, you didn't have much of what you needed. But now you got more business than you can handle. You better take that with you. Next time the devil get to talking junk, you better take something with you. You have to be able to sometimes show the devil, look at this rod. And the Lord said to him, go on before the people take some of the elders and take in your hand the rod with which you struck the river and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock of Horeb and you shall strike the rock and water will come out of the rock that my people may drink. God is the thirst quencher, not Gatorade. Don't you ever forget it. They was in the wilderness with no water and he told the man of God, hit the rock. You doubting somebody that can cause water to come out of a rock? Look at somebody with confidence. Tell them, say, ain't no telling how God will meet your needs. You know what I love about preaching this message? Because I'm a partaker. I know God has divinely sustained me through trouble, through trials. Don't you know sometimes God has purpose already that you ain't going under. I don't care what happened, you won't go. I don't care who leave, you won't go under. I don't care what you got to go through. It will be me to sustain you. I'm in the clothes. But imagine, some of us folk looking at us now don't know how we. Am I right? They still wondering. Why you hadn't drowned yet? Because they can't see the God that is determined to make you swim or float until you get what it is, preach it, pastor, that he has for you. He sustained them. Finally, he prospered them. Notice in Exodus 17. Because tell your neighbor, don't get it twisted now. He'll protect you. He'll sustain you. But tell your neighbor, you still got to do some fighting in that wilderness. Tell your neighbor, you can't lay down and die. Nor can you play dead. There is yet some fighting that has to be done in the wilderness to get you to where he's taking you. Can't get in the wilderness and forget how to fight. Can't get out there and forget how to pray. Can't get out there and forget how to give, how to fast. Come on here, somebody. This is it right here, Exodus 17 and 10. Good God Almighty, I feel good. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek and Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. When he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hand became heavy, so they took a stone and put it under him and sat on one side. Aaron and Hur supported his hand, one on one side, the other on the other side. And his hand was steady until the going down of the sun. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. He gave them good success out there. And Amalek, who should have annihilated these newcomers. Are y'all listening? Because God was with them. He made them defeat Amalek. But watch this. It wasn't just by their skill to fight. And he wanted them to know that. Yes, you're in the valley fighting. But the reason you're winning is not necessarily because of how you fight it. But because of what the man of God is doing up on the hill. What is pastor doing on the hill? Pastor praying for your family. Pastor fasting that you get it. See, sometimes the victory that happens in the valley happened because of what's taking place on on the hill some folk forget that but he wanted to show them that their victory is supernatural when have you ever heard of somebody defeating a mighty army because a man of God held up his hand God wanted them to know that the victory 
is miraculous. And he wants us to know that that's the same type stuff that's happening with us right now. We are being divinely guided through the wilderness to get to your promised land.